So on the internet, out on social media, on YouTube, there are those of us in the Second Amendment community that have strong opinions. Now, some people in the community kind of go by the belief that their opinion is the only opinion. You hear me talk about this all the time, especially when it comes to like firearms instructors, but there are people who, who run channels that that is their thing. And if you disagree with them at all on anything, you are their enemy or you're just plain wrong the ones that aren't butthurt over every single thing, right? So, we're all entitled to our opinions. I did a speaking squibbish, your opinions matter, right? We're all entitled to our opinions. And sometimes, our opinions, they, they differ from our friends or our acquaintances or co-workers in this Second Amendment community, because there's different levels. Some of you guys are my friends. I can outright pick up the phone and call you, and you know, we're friends. We know each other. We've, we've met in person, stayed at your house, whatever, right? Some of you guys are my acquaintances. We might have each other's contact information and maybe know a few personal things, but we don't really get together too often. Hopefully, those acquaintances turn more into friendships. And then there's kind of the co-workers, and those are maybe everybody else, the people out there who only comment, and they're not going to divulge any information. You can never, you can never so much as even email them to have like a, a conversation. Uh, it, guys, it's real simple. On that YouTube channel you've got, you know, the one with no videos, there's an about section. You can actually type in something, say, you know, I'm a pro 2A person. Here's my email if anybody ever wants to talk. It's really not that hard to do. And if you don't like somebody emailing you, you can always block them or whatever, right? Anyhow, those are kind of like your co-workers. You see them at work every day, but uh, you don't necessarily do anything with them outside of work. And you never know. Your co-workers may one day become your friend. You may show up at a rally or at the NRA show or something like that. And somebody walks up to a group of us because they can tell right away they've seen us on camera. They know what we look like or we're wearing our regular, you know, stuff or with our channel logos or gun channels patch or whatever, right? And they go, hi, I'm so-and-so. And this is the person who was in the live chat, been talking to us for a long time, never come on a show, and what do you know? Eventually they start coming on the show and becoming part of the conversation more so than just, and I'm not saying anything bad about the live chat. Don't get me wrong. Some people w just want to do that. And sometimes people who come on the shows on a regular basis are in a position where they can only do the live. So it's a good thing. I'm just saying, though, it kind of brings you up another level. Not that you're one of the cool kids now. I don't mean like that. Because there are plenty of people in the live chat that won't divulge anything, won't ever meet anybody, won't nothing, right? But the things they say and the things that they do, they're still one of the cool kids. So I'm just saying that when you want to look at your ability to communicate with more people... When you're trying to put in your part in the fight for the Second Amendment, actually being on YouTube, physically being on YouTube, you could stand in front of the camera with a bag on your head. At least you're a person in front of a camera talking. That probably gets you a little bit more, uh, get your message out there a little bit more so than just being in a live chat. So I guess that's what I mean. I'm doing my best to try to explain this. Yeah, you know what? Forget it. If you're offended, I don't care. All right. So anyhow. Be that as it may, I've said before, our differences are a strength. The fact that you have a very strong opinion and you're passionate about it, even if I think you're wrong, even if I think you're not doing something good for the Second Amendment, it keeps you in the fight. Because how many times is there doom and gloom and all kinds of stuff that makes any one of us at any point want to just throw our hands in the air and walk away? Except for the people making money off this. They're... You're going to have to take away their money to get them to walk away. But anyhow, the rest of us, there's plenty of things that, that can make somebody get discouraged. They don't, want to, they don't want to stay active. They don't want to stay vigilant. They don't want to keep making videos or keep showing up on live shows or, or keep, keep joining the live chat or, or, or taking somebody to the range or talking to, to people at gun shows or gun ranges or gun stores or whatever it is we do in the community for the fight. Because there's so many different things that we can all do 
and nobody has to do everything. And some people just do one thing, and I'm okay with just doing one thing. And there are people in our community with various levels with firearms. Some of you guys are out there talking about stuff that you don't know anything about. You really don't. And there's some of you guys out there that um, have really strong opinions, but you don't really have the experience to back it up. You have, ex you have, you have some experience, but you, you, some of the opinions you have, I think, are, are they just have no substance because you've never actually done this. You've never actually experienced this. You've never, it's all hearsay or, well, Big YouTube Channel X said it, so it must be true. Dude, challenge everybody. Big YouTube Channel X, even me. In one of the videos that I pulled, it was my worst video ever, I made a comment about a firearm being carried by a Confederate Marine, having absolutely no evidence that any Confederate Marine ever actually carried this firearm. That's what I mean about some people just saying stuff and, you know, just not having their facts right, and you go, well, who cares? No, it matters. It matters to some of us, even me. That's not the reason I pulled the video, but it's on the list of reasons. The whole point being is we all try to contribute. We all have strong opinions. Our opinions are not always the same. Our opinions keep that fire burning that, that keeps us in the fight. And we all have the ability to affect change or to reach out to an audience through this social media thing. When we're together on these shows or at these get-togethers, sometimes personalities clash. Sometimes you walk into a room and you shake hands and hug, and then there's that one person that's never going to shake your hand or hug you. Then there's that one person that hugs you that you didn't want to hug you. Yeah. And sometimes those that damage can't ever be repaired. Sometimes we get on online feuds. I was having a, a, a back and forth with somebody in the comment section, and um, we changed the subject to alcohol. Suddenly the whole conversation changed. And that's something about our community. We may not agree on subject A, but we're both interested in subject B. At the end of the day, we're all fighting for the Second Amendment, despite your experience level, despite how many subscribers you have, despite whether or not you're doing this for money, despite whether in fact you're not doing this for money, despite, despite uh, your reason, because there's lots of different reasons people fight for the Second Amendment. Lots of different reasons. I don't want to get behind the people that are calling for all of us to unify because I don't agree with it. We're already unified. We all believe in the Second Amendment. But then we, we branch out all over. The, that's the beauty of America. That's the whole melting pot thing. That's the whole, we don't need to force diversity. It exists. And I don't have to accept our differences, whether it be opinion or anything else. I don't, because it's a free country. Maybe that does keep me from having a conversation with somebody. Or maybe that does keep me on, on edge with somebody else who doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Whatever it is, that's my consequence to bear. But when I have a disagreement with some of you guys, sometimes I stay in it and I will ride you. I will, I will dog you because I'm that passionate about where I stand. And there's other times where I'll just back off and shut up because it's pointless. It's pointless to go on. It's pointless to have this conversation. It's not, or it's not doing any good. Or it's going to affect our relationship, no matter what, what level it's at. Don't look at my silence as weakness, because if that's what you think, you don't know me that well. And I, there are plenty of people out there that would love for me to be silent, all the time. But the thing is, we all are entitled to our opinion. Sometimes the opinions I have don't jibe with other people. Sometimes their opinions... I just would like to say that in some cases, not all, it's a good idea to know what you're talking about before you start talking. Whether you're making a video and you're putting factual information in there, or whether you're on a live show discussing your opinion on a topic. Just make sure that you've got some facts or some experience. That's not always necessary. And it doesn't mean that you're not entitled to an opinion if you're not this, that, or the other. But you may get torn apart, not by, necessarily just by me, but by a lot of people, if your opinion is based off of ignorance. Thanks for listening.